Flight Sim Universe. Okay guys, so I'm here in a Boeing 747. Um, so I am actually in uh, Seattle right now at Salt Lake City International on runway 34 right, I believe. So the weather is extremely foggy as you can probably tell and it's at dusk. I also have these uh, runway light improvements. There you can see it a lot better. So, uh, But before we begin we have to get up our GPS. So we need to find out the ILS code for the runway. So we press the right, the outer right one. We press the inner one a few times so we get to this screen, then push the cursor. And just scroll down using the outer knob until you find your right ILS frequency. So there it is, 34 right, and that is 109.5. So we just enter that in, into our standby. Again, I press shift two to get that up. So once you have it set, you can switch it over. So you, that uh, button in the center is used to switch between the uh, frequencies there. So we're going to leave it as the main one just for now. So then close both of them. And so basically I have my runway lights on. Everything's all good. So, um, oh yeah. You have, to, uh, you have to add a few, not just the flaps, because when you come in and approach, you have to be slow, and you don't want to stall, which I've done a lot. <laughs> so, uh, in order for this to work, we have to go up to a reasonable speed, so uh, we're just going to max out our throttle here and pretend to take off, even though we're not actually going to lift off the ground. This is just to get speed, so when we slew to the right position, we'll be all good caught up to speed or else you'll just fall right out of the sky which is the bad part about so but so we have to get up to a correct temperature or <laughs> speed <laughs> so once we're there we're gonna press the Y key and then press F4 so we should be skyrocketing upwards um, let's go right about here because that's like above the cloud line it looks pretty cool so then pull back on your joystick and you should be going uh, about 2000 miles an hour backwards <laughs> so uh, this is just setting up our approach so it'll be perfect so what we're looking for actually is that purple diamond down on our uh, primary flight display to go above the horizon so it will be technically below the glide slope just wait for okay here it comes and that looks good. So it's about one notch up. So this looks like a good place. So um, now we're going to have to set the autopilot all up. I'm working. Now, most people will set uh, altitude here, but you know, we're, we're only going to be going like a half a mile before we intercept it. So it's not really necessary. F just for the purposes of this tutorial, I mean. On a normal flight, you'd be coming in on your uh, on your uh, altitude there, but you know, just to, if you just want to fly in, you don't really need to. You're just gonna fly right into the glide slope. So I'm manually flying the aircraft right here into the glide slope. And because the autopilot button is broken, apparently, on my edition of the 747's cockpit, I mean, heard some other people had it too, I don't know if it, how widespread it is, but, so, uh, yeah, you press the Z key, which is what I did right there, and it should start aligning itself up with the runway. So our nose is a little high here, so let's push down a little. should be intercepting the glass up any second now so and the ILS will bring us down right into oh well there we go I have no control over the aircraft so it's all being controlled by the glide slope and the localizer at the base of uh, runway 32 right so our plane is beginning to descend on its own so I'm not really touching the controls at all it's just descending perfectly fine 
Now, that is the main glitch there, is that people aren't below the glide slope to intercept it. I've done it several times. You're a little bit above it. You have to watch out for that triangle. So, uh, if you're you, you're you should be below it when you intercept it, or else it won't work. As you can see, the ILS is bringing us right down on it. So, we don't really have to do any work up until the very end. Another glitch that some people uh, get often is when they slew sometimes it affects like the radios and it's not all you know working so you just switch back and forth and it should like reset itself and like turn on and off the GPS and you know, everything should work I mean there are rare occasions where the ILS will not be properly aligned with the runway so I made sure for this video that this wasn't one of them because <laughs> I've tried many other airports and about one out of every three or so maybe one out of four they're not completely lined up. Now I believe that is correctly modeled in, for uh, real life, because in real life I think they are actually uh, off by that. <laughs> so oh, here's our airplane again, outside view. Now the landing gear is down, which it really should be at this altitude. But so uh, there's our uh, wing view. So you know, it's like if you're a passenger, this is what it'll look like. In you can even see the uh, towns down there, the uh, buildings, and uh, Salt Lake City. So it's a nice foggy feel and dawn, or er, dusk rather. So once our plane uh, fully descends in, which it's about to right now into the thick fog, we won't really be able to see much. Now I'm using the default fog variant with I think three fourths three-fourths of a mile visibility in the fog actually so here we are a bit, about a minute later and you can see you really can't see anything in front of you you can barely see the ground right there so I, I think this would be a, a category two or maybe category one ILS I don't know the technical uh, how what the minimums you need but this you couldn't fly this manually there's no way you could land this plane without ILS least in the real world. So we're coming down a nice rate here so it's all completely foggy out. We can't really see anything. So we're just going to let the plane do most of it and we're just waiting to see the uh, runway markings. Okay I think I see the uh, runway strip right there. We have the end runway lights can't even see the approach lighting there, just barely. But there are the end runway lights and the approach lights there. There we go. So now disengage your auto throttle and then your autopilot and pull back on a stick very gently. And you have a nice soft landing. You don't want to let the autopilot take you all the way because you know you get uh, you wound up with a hard landing. So once the nose comes down, you can hit the brakes, put full. Uh, reverse thrust and put up your spoilers you should come to a complete stop and then you can uh, turn off at the next taxiway and there you go complete ILS landing so uh, let's let's take a look at it from the passenger view again so uh, see if you're a passenger so uh, here we are again and I'm going to be taking that slowly from the passenger view so you can see now yeah I did have to turn on auto gen because to get like max frame rates because weather really you know hurts your frame rates there so I did have to turn on auto gen a little but it still turned out pretty good it was fog I mean and perfect touchdown no bumps no wasn't very hard it was you know, it, it was a perfect landing basically perfect ILS for your spoilers and uh, you're good to go